Summary Smoothie. Sip smart. Learn fast. <sighs> Debate on the gender pay gap. Interview with Jordan Peterson. <coughs> 1. The interviewee, clinical psychologist and professor Jordan Peterson, believes that men need to grow up and adopt responsibilities in order to find meaning in their lives and avoid becoming bitter and resentful. He argues that young men are not receiving enough encouragement to do so, and that his lectures have had a dramatic impact because they are starving for this message. 2. While his audience is predominantly male, he believes that women also want competent and powerful partners, rather than weak ones they can dominate. As a clinical psychologist, he argues that dominating a partner is a bad long-term solution for both parties. 3. He discusses the gender pay gap and the claim that Western culture is oppressive towards women. Peterson argues that while the pay gap exists, it is not solely due to gender and that there are multiple factors at play, including personality traits like agreeableness. 4. Jordan suggests that women should be more assertive in asking for pay raises and that assertiveness training can be helpful. The speaker also notes that eliminating the pay gap completely could have unintended consequences and may not necessarily be in women's best interests. 5. Peterson goes on suggesting that women often choose careers that are paid less or have children, which can limit their opportunities. He argues that women face a career and family crisis in their late 20s to early 30s due to societal pressures. 6. The Interviewer Kathy Newman questions the Peterson's views on gender equality, with Peterson suggesting that equality of opportunity is desirable but equality of outcome is not achievable due to inherent differences between men and women. He also suggests that some women may not want high-end careers like men do. 7. Further the issue of equal pay for women is discussed and the challenges in determining what work is equal. Jordan Peterson argues that women face hurdles in their careers and need to be tough and formidable to succeed. The conversation also touches on the idea of adopting female traits in the workplace and the dominance of women in consumer decisions. Peterson believes that masculine traits are helpful for success, but also acknowledges the need for change in societal norms. 8. Jordan speaks about the traits that predict success in the workplace, stating that female traits do not necessarily predict success, but intelligence and conscientiousness do. He points out that there is no difference in general cognitive ability between men and women. 9. The conversation then shifts to the Peterson's controversial stance on refusing to use preferred personal pronouns for trans individuals, citing freedom of speech as their reason. He clarifies that he would call a trans person by their preferred pronoun if asked directly, but refuses to cede linguistic territory to radical leftists. He also defends his stance against accusations of mistreating students or being transphobic. 10. Following is a comparison between a person struggling with their gender identity and Chairman Mao and the philosophy behind left-wing activism. Jordan Peterson argues that the philosophy of group identity being paramount is similar to that of Mao's China and the Soviet Union, and that hierarchical structures are not solely a sociological construct of the Western patriarchy. 11. Peterson uses lobsters as an example to demonstrate the inevitability of hierarchical organization in both animals and humans. The interviewer, Kathy Newman, accuses Peterson of provocation and stirring up anger, but he defends his beliefs as true and not meant to provoke. 12. Jordan Peterson denies accusations of abuse and anger from his followers, stating that he has received 25,000 letters from people who claim he has helped them. He challenges his accusers to provide substantial examples before he can address their claims. <laughs>